Hey, what's up, Scott Ball? Come here with Imagination Creation Films, and today, what well, we're talking about this. This is the Port Keys BM5 WR, which I'm pretty sure stands for, wow, remote. So if you are first joining my channel, thank you for coming on by, and I'm sure you really wanna get into the details of this, and you know what, I want you to as well. Before we do, just a quick little thing. Hey, could you uh, go ahead and subscribe, you know? Just give me a little thumbs up, and a little, little like, share down below, because uh, you help make this channel better. This is a community of filmmakers just like you. And uh, well, we're striving to, uh, we're gonna hit a million subscribers this year. It's a very lofty goal. Maybe we could do it. I, I, I think we almost can. So uh, yeah, if you just click subscribe, that would be greatly appreciated. Also, uh, Port Keys did send this monitor to me for review, but as always, no money exchange hands. They do not get to see this review before it's released. It is 100% my unbiased review. And if you know me, you know I'm going to give the good and the bad and the, well, the monitor. I'm going to give you a review. So let's dive in. So this is a Hybrite 5.5 inch monitor, and it has a uh, a lot of features that well, a lot of people are really looking for. the 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 giant elephant in the room. Well, yeah, it will control Komodo wirelessly. We'll get into that in just a minute. Let's go through the monitor itself. So it is about 2200 nits. That is a high bright monitor by normal standards. It works just fine outside. It's not as bright as some of the very brightest out there, but I have found that the color on it is uh, pretty good, and if not a little bit better than some others. But you gotta have different trade-offs of everything. This is a 5.5 inch screen. Uh, I normally use a seven inch screen because, well, I'm old and my eyes are like, hmm, you know, it'd be nice if you could see. Now, here's the positive. I've used a lot of five inch monitors in the past from, from many other brands, small HD, and, and well, I've owned many small HDs, and I wasn't quite happy with the screen size versus the clarity that you get. And I'm happy to say, this is the first five inch class monitor that I have been able to actually use without putting cheater glasses on, which, which we're not gonna talk about that ever again. Uh, I can actually pull focus on this. So it's actually a five inch monitor that I can use, which kind of shocked me because I, first I was expecting, well, this will be a lot of fun uh, and it'll be good in a lot of situations, but um, where I need to see or I don't wanna put on glasses, it may not work. It works. It actually is crystal clear. Now, it's gonna be really hard to show that here on this with the overhead camera, but I wanted to give you an idea of, of how it operates and how it all works and go through the pros and cons of it, and we can do that. So it has a SDI in and out, and it has an HDMI in, and you can power it with uh, a variety of cables, including uh, Sony batteries on the back. It also comes with a DTAP cable. It comes in this tiny, and I mean tiny little case. This is what the monitor comes in. It's, it's adorable, uh, yeah. Um, but it comes with a lot of cable options as well for power. I use the DTAP cable myself. Uh, I try not to add as much weight as I can to my small cameras, especially a Komodo, which I'm literally trying to make it as small as possible. On here, you'll find a few function keys, a menu button, an on-off switch, a headphone jack. Uh, there's a focus pulling jack for your first AC to actually go in, and you can use a couple of different brands of wireless follow focus and just plug right in there. That's kind of cool, and you can control the focus on the camera. Um, and then there's a USB for adding in LUTs or adding in um, firmware that, you know, if you wanted to update your firmware, it's really kind of handy. And it's something you should get familiar with because I'm sure there's going to be a few firmware updates for this. And we'll get into that in just a little bit. So like a lot of the port keys, it is touchscreen. And so the way it operates is you tap and swipe, tap and swipe. So tap left, tap right, tap up and down. 
and you get different menus. So if we tap, it comes up to the last menu. This menu is where your settings are. Uh, you can see the picture there. Uh, you can adjust your tent, your backlight, your even your anamorphic modes. There are quite a few. Uh, you could do a custom user one. There's a two, three, five, two, one, eight, five, one, six, six, one, five, one, four, two, one, three, three, and back to one. There's your color temperature and your backlight. Here you can choose your camera input. Here you can tell it uh, what you want to do with your SDI out. So if you want to put a LUT going out, you can do that, change it from 1080p to 1080i, and then your levels of it as well. And then here you can change how the actual display works. If you have it upside down, you need to flip it, horizontal, vertical, all that good stuff. You've got all those options down here. And then you have some more settings here, so you can change your, your language, the transparency of how uh, it looks. You can do a full system reset. Here's your fan control. It does have a fan and when you turn it on high, um, yeah, don't don't turn it on high. I use it on low and I, I have been using it indoors, outdoors, and I have not had a problem with it overheating at all on low. So I'd tell you just leave it on low, um, high, I guess if there's a situation where you got to use it, then you got to use it. But I certainly wouldn't. And then Port Keys says that they calibrate all their monitors before they go out so that your screen color calibration is here. You can load it or unload it. And I mean, it doesn't look bad at all. Uh, are you gonna color grade on it? No, but can you make probably 80% of your color decisions on set with it? Yes, you can. Uh, and then down here, you can load uh, LUTs from your USB stick into the actual monitor itself. Now, we're going to go over here, and then there's audio control, and then here is where you would update your firmware. Now we're going to go to the right, and here is where you have all of your tools. So you can do false color, which is nice, and that is adjustable. You can, you can program that the various ways. You have RGB Parade down there. You can do what I really love to shoot, is being able to see all my scopes at the same time. You're clearly not gonna be pulling focus on this tiny little screen at this point, but you're sure gonna get exposure and wait, now I can pull focus. Yeah, isn't that a thing? And then right here is, well, it's where I've got it loaded. These are all customizable. You can add in whatever you want just by clicking the plus sign. And these are all the available options that you have. You got your waveforms, histograms, vector scopes, time code, image overlay, image capture, which we're about to go into, zooming, zebra, crosshairs, peaking, guides, you, you, you name it, you, you've got it. And then also you can assign a function key, one of these function keys up top to one of these quick ones. So if you don't want to tap, you just want to click. You got that. So to get out of here, back up. Now, over here, we have this little right here. So we click this and it says, I'm ready. So when you've got this and you're ready to go, tap it. It turns green. Yep, and then it's got it. It has stored, I believe it stores 16 in internal memory. Uh, it doesn't go off to an SD card or anything like that, just stores them internally. So now you can choose overlay. Now you're like, well, that doesn't look like much. Oh, but it is. See, now I can line up my shot and get it exactly how it was. Now that is exceptionally handy for coming back to a scene that you need to reshoot. It's really good for doing multiple takes where your camera's moving and you need to get back to your start point. That's super handy. And all of this can be done simply by tapping, adding in, and away you go. Uh, down here, you can see your fan speed, your brightness, and how much voltage is on the battery. Now, let's go down. This is where it gets fun. So you can connect this to your Komodo wirelessly through Wi-Fi, but before you start digging in here and you're like, oh my God, it won't connect, I can't do anything. You have to have a few settings on your Komodo a certain way for it to work. So menu, go down to communications, go to Wi-Fi, make sure it's in mode ad hoc, then in ad hoc, go down to your SSID, and your SSID can be anything you want as long as it starts with the word Komodo. So it's kind of like uh, 
Ford Z. You can have any color model T you want as long as it's black. Down here on the band, make sure it is set to 2.4 gigahertz. That is the only way this will work. Once you do that, then you can click on Wi-Fi and over here, you can click on connecting a camera and you can add a new camera. Uh, there are other cameras here that you can control. They don't control with Wi-Fi. They do control with cables if I understand it correctly, but that's how you do it. Now, once you're in here, you have all of your control down here. So we're gonna go over here to Iris and you can see, well, there's my Iris set on here. Now this is where, well, honestly, it gets a little clunky. It works, but it gets a little clunky. And I think, I think they're gonna fix this with firmware. We'll see. If you do the arrows, you can see it changes. It does just fine. If you do the pull slide, let's go down here. Where am I at? This has not updated. This is still the exact same number it was. Let go. Oh, it's too late. That's too far. Let's go over here. What did I get to? I don't know. It's five. Where am I at here? Uh, oh, seven, one. So use the touch buttons because it'll just save you a little bit of hassle. Um, shutter speed right here, same thing. Don't use the slide, use the uh, adjustment over here. ISO, same thing. You won't be able to see in real time your adjustments unless you're tapping on the buttons. Now, frame rate, this is an interesting one because it shows 24 frames per second. It doesn't display that you're actually on 2398 or 39 if you're doing uh, the slow-mo option in 6K on Komodo. I'm assuming it won't fit on the screen. Fair enough, but that got me at first. I thought, whoa, we, we've switched me over to 24 and I didn't want to be. No, it's actually rounding up. Keep that in mind. And then you could also do your color temperature here. You can't adjust your tint. You'll have to do that in Komodo, but you can do it here. And then you can expose, uh, adjust your exposure adjustment up here. And this is, uh, this is how you start something pleasurable. Record. Look at that. It's recording. <gasps> Ooh, it stopped. So you get basic functions on the touchscreen itself. And that is kind of useful because those of us who have been using RED cameras for a while, I constantly go up and tap on my screen and go, <laughs> I probably shouldn't have done that. So the next thing we're going to talk about is focus control. And if you flip up, you can see we have focus control. We have record button at the bottom. You can do focus number one. You can do zoom or iris. You can control anything electronic, or if you have a motor plugged in, uh, you can control that as well. Uh, you can start set an A or a B, and then you can actually do a nice little slope focus pull uh, right here with a set time. Uh, and you can also tap to focus. You can do all of that from, from the screen. There's a lot of things that this monitor does and a few that, well, it could use just a little more work on, but it's not bad. Number one thing is it is a bright, clear, small five inch monitor that controls your camera. That's, that is a lot, that says a lot. Uh, the positives are it does work. It does control your camera. It does record. It allows you to touch your screen. It has a lot of fantastic tools in it. Um, the color accuracy is not bad. Uh, I mean, there's a lot to like about this monitor. The bad, well, it's, it's clunky. It's, uh, it's, it, feels, it feels like, um, like it woke up from a hangover. The clunkiness you can get used to, and I have to assume, I don't know for certain, but that kind of stuff can be worked out in firmware updates. So we'll look forward to that. Uh, the other negative on it, um, there's no HDMI out, so you can't pass through. It has an HDMI in, but not one out. So it's a little interesting. Another negative is the high fan speed and even the medium fan speed. That's, that's pretty much unusable on set. But the low works just fine and it's very quiet. Color accuracy, the brightness, the clarity, the functionality, all of that adds up though to one big positive and that is it works. It does exactly what it's supposed to do. There's not a lot to it that, well, and I haven't already said, 
it's a good monitor. It's a good monitor for a small Komodo rig. Is it the best monitor? No, I don't think so. Um, I've used a lot of monitors. There's quite a few that have a bunch of nice, better features in some respects. And there's some that, that don't have the features that this one does. I will say that the color on this one is better than several of the others, but not a lot. It's not, it's not huge difference. It's, it's maybe 10% better. Uh, the brightness, it's not as bright. Uh, the functionality of it, it's, it, you get used to it moving around. It is a tool. It's a very affordable tool. And it's a very affordable tool that controls your Komodo, which I'm guessing a lot of you were interested in here. But if you have a Z-Cam or Panasonic or others, it'll control that too. It's kind of a win-win here. So what do you think of this monitor? Do you think it's uh, cool? you think it's awesome? you think it, hmm, what do you think? Let me know in the comment section down below. You know, I always try to read and respond to each and every comment down there, even if it's just to say thank you. Remember, YouTube has this algorithm, and this algorithm, well, she is heartless. She will be like, ooh, Scott, uh, squirrel, um, and that's what happens. And so you can help me by giving me a thumbs up. You can help me by subscribing and letting your friends know about this video and sharing it out on the interwebs. You can help me. You can also help me with the tip jar down below. You can help me on Patreon, PayPal, any Amazon affiliate links that would be down there, or you could become a channel member, which is a great way for you to say, I support you, Scott. I think you produce valuable content. And I'd be like, mm, okay, thanks. You know, I appreciate it. But there are perks for that. And then subscribing, make sure you click that alert bell, click all notifications because I am live streaming a little bit more now. Got the whole live streaming rig, multicam. We are having a good time when the internet lets me. And uh, yeah, as always, as I like to leave it, don't let your passions center around your life. Let your life center around your passions. Mm -hmm.